Three. We have a lady on the line. That's right. Oh, I was supposed to go to the lady first. Is that what your claim is? I see. <laughs> yes. I have probably not been following that rule since you've been gone. I generally since look at the you've times. Been gone. <laughs> <laughs> pop in here with Meg. Meg, calling hi. from Virginia. Hey, Meg. First off, hi, Ian. I'm hey. so happy you're out. Yes, thank you for writing me. I appreciate it. So uh, you are a civil disobedience superstar. What's and on your and mind? a former host of uh, Free Talk yes. Live and probably a future when you get back up here. Yeah, um, if I get back up there. <laughs> what? Um, well, we, as some of you know, the uh, Lemonade Liberators, uh, we had our court date this week. <gasps> oh, really? It did not go well. No, well, just to recap for our listeners, you guys did a lemonade stand civil disobedience, and you were the only lemonade stand to be run completely by non-children, by uh, adult-type people, and they came after you with a vengeance there in D.C., uh, and oh, you yeah. and some others were arrested and charged with multiple things. What were some of the charges? Um, our charges were vending without a permit, failure to obey, and unlawful conduct. All right, so what happened this week? So uh, we went to court, and there was two different courtrooms that we had to go to since one of them was a permit issue and the other was a criminal issue. So we go to the permit one first, and we go in there, and they tell us that um, about half the cases in that room, the government wasn't going to prosecute them. And they gave us a slip of paper saying, like, due to lack of police paperwork or something like that. And they told us that it would still be on the books. So if anything happened, like, the government still had a year to bring up those charges against us. But uh, they weren't going to prosecute it, so we just had to leave. And so we left, and we went to the next courtroom, which we thought was going to be our criminal charges of failure to obey and uh, unlawful conduct. But it, it was not. And... What happened in that courtroom is probably the most extreme example of all this, you know, horrible courtroom drama that we've all been discussing. Now, before you go tonight. on to describe it, I'm sure you were allowed to bring video cameras in and uh, record it all so we can all see what happened, right? Well, oddly enough, I was allowed to bring in my iPad, but uh, at a certain point, one of the bailiffs came over and told me that only lawyers are allowed to have those things out, huh. so I couldn't have it out. So did you get any? So video? they have so the Constitution, which says there shall be no what class of royalty or mm-hmm. something like that. Essentially, yeah. the claim here is is that there are special people in the courtroom and they can have special privileges, whereas you, the uh, you, the, the 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 we the people, the uh, the what, the, the person the upon Surf. whom the government is founded, Sleep. you don't have that right. Yeah. So no, there's no video or anything, unfortunately, which uh, really would have been useful to me, just so. I could know what charge I have right now because I still don't know. Another reason, by the way, if I may in- inject here, uh, another reason to move to New Hampshire. If you're going to do activism, if you're going to be in court, and if you're going to do activism at some point, there's a good chance you'll get dragged into court or somebody you know will. Uh, we actually get to have video cameras in, in court. It, they're making it difficult. You know, you have to jump through a couple hoops. But at least you can do it here, yes. unlike in Florida, California, D.C. I mean, we, we hear from people all the time who want to tell us their story, and they can't show us their story. They can't show anyone their story because they're completely cut out from that. So what uh, what went down? So um, they called our names, and we went up there. And before we could even speak— All together? Yeah, all together. Okay. We were called Um, Mm co-defendants. So we went up there, and, you know, we stood in front of the microphone. Before we could say anything, these three men we had never seen, never talked to, never met, they stood in front of us and claimed to be our lawyers. And oh. we were just sort of confused beyond belief at that point. And then the clerk started reading off our charge. And it was a charge we had never heard of. All right, so I want to get to the rest of this. You can stick with us, right, Meg? Oh, sir. Sure. Yeah, I'll have right. it. More with Meg. Sorry. <laughs> In moments. 855-450-3733. Give us a call here on Free Talk Live. So we've been talking with Meg, who is uh, not only a former co-host on Free Talk Live, and hopefully we'll have her back in here someday, but she's gone down on a a kind of a furlough to to the D.C. area, where she's been getting involved in some action and activism down that way, which, of course, I always say be careful when you're dealing with uh, doing especially civil disobedience, Uh, but any kind of activism. Just the guy just getting out of jail for doing civil disobedience activism. He did it in the right place. But I'm in New Hampshire where I've got people backing me up, where people can bring a camera into a court, uh, where the jail is like the club med of jails. I wouldn't want to go to a D.C. jail, but Meg is down there and she's facing several charges because she and some others, some other brave souls, decided to set up.
set up a lemonade stand in some public park in D.C. and was charged with several things for it. And Meg, you were uh, relating what happened. You just gotten into court when you and your uh, two cohorts were called up. They just three lawyers walked up in front of you. Yeah. So, um, you know, they're standing in front of us claiming to represent us. And then the clerk reads off the charge, which is a completely new charge. We never heard of it. And she didn't mention the failure to obey or um, criminal conduct, which we thought we were there for. It was something like selling, begging, or demonstrating on capital grounds without a permit. And, you know, our uh, prosecu- the prosecutor started saying uh, he wanted us to be part of some deferment program, at which point the judge said, okay, then you are all ordered to take a drug test today. If you come out positive, you must continue drug testing every week until uh, your trial. And, you know, if we are found, uh, you know, positive in that test today, then all these drug tests that we have to take after that and the program that we have to be a part of has to be paid for out of pocket unless we give them all our information and they can prove that we can't afford it, in which case it's paid for by taxpayers. Hold on a second. Let me see if I'm following this. So you come into court expecting criminal charges. It ends up being some sort of a permit issue in this particular courtroom. They want to put you in a deferment program, which means what? That they're going to drop the charge as long as you pass a bunch of drug tests? Well, these uh, deferment programs, they just make you uh, eligible for the deferment, which means that the prosecution won't go (laughs) forward. But if you're arrested within like a certain amount of time, then it can bring up the charges again. Wow. So it's like and, a suspended so sentence, essentially, the, or something yeah. like that. They're so picking you've, up the charges. you've been given a penalty without actually being found guilty in the hopes that they won't take you to trial? That's the idea? Yeah, that, that's the idea. And it was wow. at that point that uh, we all spoke up and said, okay, we don't want to do that. And the judge yelled at us, of course, for speaking because it, you know, it was our lawyer's job to speak. Right, yeah, you're us, being but, represented. You don't get to speak. In Who court. are these people? Yeah. <laughs> but they didn't even know our name or if we were pleading not guilty or guilty or what. They, wow. they didn't know anything This is about just us. an arraignment. Yes. And so, you know, finally, after a little bit of bickering with the judge, she uh, let our lawyers take us out of the room to uh, talk some sense into us. Uh. And, you know, we sat down. Well, me and Will sat down with our lawyers, and Catherine was actually chasing her lawyer down the hallway. He would just run away from her. She'd ask him a question, he'd run. And so, you know, she ended up joining with our lawyers, even though they couldn't give her advice since, you know, they weren't her appointed lawyer, but she just didn't know what was going on. And so they explained the deferment program to us. We said we didn't want to do it. And, you know, they're like, well, it's not really your choice. Yeah, <laughs> we, nobody's allowed to say no to this. Because <laughs> you wanted yeah. to go to trial, right? Uh, well, we haven't even been, you know, given a trial date. Yet. Right. But that's or why you didn't like want that. the deferment program is because you wanted yeah. to have a chance. We in court. want trial. Yeah. And um, unfortunately now, because they knocked it down to a single charge, uh, which is just a misdemeanor. It so wait, you're certain that they that they've null processed the other charges? That's a certainty. Yeah. OK. Yeah, that's a certainty. Well, that's um, a, a little bit of good news, I suppose. Well, no, because the no? single charge, its maximum penalty is 180 days, which is just shy of six months, yep. which yep. means it doesn't qualify for a jury trial. Oh, man. So you stand in front of a judge uh, begging them to, uh, you know, rep- to, to recognize your civil disobedience. Or go and take a drug test and maybe or take a bunch of drug tests and then maybe we'll defer this and, you know, not bring it back up in the future. That's pretty much the choice? Is that's the choice, yeah. And... Uh, So, you know, we go back into court and, uh, you know, we've told the lawyers explicitly we don't want to do the deferment program. We'd like to request a jury trial, you know, everything. So they go up there and they just say, yeah, they'll do the deferment. (laughs) And we're like, what's going on? And they mentioned the uh, we would like a jury trial at which, you know, of course, the judge said it wasn't an option. And they said, "Okay." And then they hand us these papers and it's like a map of the Capitol building with big square around it. And they say we're not allowed anywhere within that square anymore, which means we're completely cut off from any of our so-called representatives in the Capitol (laughs) at this point, completely Mm. cut off from that area. And they hand us this paper that gives us this long list of things, including, like, we have to take a drug test today. If it comes out positive, we have to, you know, go to this place to do weekly testing. We have to stay off Capitol grounds, all these weird things. And they show (laughs) us where we're supposed to sign our name. And so they hand it to me. I'm 
reading like the first paragraph and I lean into my lawyer and I say, you know, I told you I didn't want to do this. And the clerk standing next to me overhears that, rips the papers out of my hands and out of Catherine's hands and just writes refused where our name should go and then rips off our copy and hands it to us and says, get out. And at the bottom it says, if you refuse, uh, a bench warrant will be applied. And, you know, now I have a bench warrant out for me. So I'm technically a fugitive at this point. Stunning. Stu- that sounds yeah, like DC. Stunned. Yeah, that sounds like what what happens in DC. You get the run around, or you get the shaft. Yeah, or, I mean, you, you know. think it's bad where if we think it's bad in New Hampshire, and it's bad, it's worse <laughs> in so many other places. I mean, this is crazy. Can you imagine just for a moment? The these lawyers are not used to people saying no to their services. Can you imagine being the average person walking into this and just being completely befuddled and bewildered with what's going on around you? And like, you know, just so grateful that you have this attorney. And we we were standing in court today because I went to do some stuff at a superior court, get some business taken care of. And this young lady, maybe like 21, walks in and she said, what do I do? She says this to the security agent. She'd never been in a courtroom before in her life. And there are people that are that are in these situations that don't have the experience that you do, Meg, of actually going to court, watching other trials, being in court yourself and defending yourself. You at least have some inclination as to what your rights are and at some level of uh, a willingness to assert them. But even in even in your case, they would just walk all over you. Right. That, and then yeah. The whole trusting we of the... We were not given a chance to speak. And when we were leaving, Eddie asked the uh, prosecutor, like, how do you feel about putting people, people in cages? And the prosecutor actually said to him, these uh, white suburban kids need to learn that they're not above the law. You know, I'd like to know what you're going to do now, uh, Meg, because there's a, apparently a warrant out for your arrest. Uh, so can yeah. you stick with us? Yeah. I'll All right, more coming up with Meg here in moments. It's freetalklive.com, so go check them out. Let's go back to Meg in Virginia. Meg? Well, now Meg's uh, been telling us about what, Mark? Well, I have to recap. You're yeah. here. Go ahead. All right, fine. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Meg, you uh, you went to court with some of your lemonade vending cohorts today as y'all were Evil arrested doers. in D.C. Uh, over the summer for selling lemonade in a public mm-hmm. park. And they changed your charge around. They told you that uh, you could get out of the charge perhaps with a so-called deferment if you just go ahead and take a drug test, which you weren't charged with any drug possession, uh, and continue taking drug tests. If you failed the drug test, then they might let you off in the future. And you tried to take it to trial, but they said, no, sorry, you can't take it. Have a jury trial on this because we've reduced it to the point, you know, the charge, the severity of the charge to the point where you're not allowed to have a jury trial. So that was disappointing. You had these lawyers who told you that they were going to represent you, but you said you didn't want that. they did it anyway, and welcome to the legal land world of Washington, D.C. So continue, please. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we didn't really have a choice if we wanted to be part of that deferment program or not. So, you know, it was ordered to us, uh, and we had to take that drug test at 2.30 in the afternoon. And instead, we just, you know, walked out of the courtroom that day. So Well, right, because uh, have- they wrote down that you'd refused it, and, and apparently that means you've got a warrant out for your arrest. Well, yeah, they said that a bench warrant would be issued if uh, these were not followed. And, you know, I didn't write refuse. The lady just took it from me and wrote refuse because she said we were taking too long. Although it was because I, you know, said to my lawyer, I told you I didn't want to do this. And she overheard that, which I thought, you know, that was supposed to be confidential, but apparently not. (laughs) Yeah, right. I mean, you can't say something to your attorney without them uh, chiming in and just writing something on a piece of paper. I mean, you hadn't actually sort of officially refused. You just told the uh, the lawyer, look, I didn't want this. Now, did right. they do the refusal thing to just two of the three or all three of you? They ended up doing it to all three because, wow. you know, once she took mine and Catherine's paper, Will just sort of looked up. And he kind of lucked out in that the uh, lawyer that he got is a self-acclaimed libertarian. So, you know, he didn't act any different in front of the judge. Sure. But he, you know at least a little more mindful of where we're coming from on this. So, so what's the next? What's going to happen So now? at this point, um, we have a lot of people trying to look for lawyers for us. We have, uh, I think it's, I don't know exactly what it's called. It's just more of like a status hearing on the 24th of October. And so we're looking for a lawyer at this point because if we go back there, then obviously we can just be arrested at that point and taken to jail for contempt. Mm-hmm. And so we want to go in there with, you know, somebody who at least can give us the possibility of walking away, because if not, it's also a serious option to just never go back to D.C. Would they so, extradite for something like this? Do you think it is essentially a permit violation, right? 
Yeah, well, the original charge is a permit violation. However, this new contempt charge is a criminal violation. Mm. Ah. And so the addition of those two, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if not going back to D.C. is necessarily a solution. But what is the solution? Yeah. I mean, it's such a mixed up situation. You, you can't even find your – it's like being trapped in a paper bag and you don't have any idea how to get out. It's so dark and yeah. you're just – you're stumbling around and you have no clue. The system is designed yeah, I, so I that people do not violate what they um, – you know, the, so that people j- j- obey. It's designed yeah. for you to, to be – you know, incentivize you to obey. So civil disobedience has its uh, downfalls. And, and the idea that the, uh, the public defender appointed to these individuals who did not choose it – and the public defender's self-interest is to, yeah, we'll just do whatever the court says because we got to work with these guys every day. You know, it's, so it's it's just shameful. Yeah. Anything else you, you know, want to share tonight, Meg, about this? Heaven forbid they put effort into defense. No. Right. I mean, are you pretty much burned out on this whole D.C. Uh, trip? Uh, it's not that I'm burned out. It's just that for the extreme measures that I'm facing, like a year or two in jail at this point, over... Oh. 10 minutes of civil disobedience, yeah. you know, like it did do a lot. It did get a lot of exposure and it did show a lot of people that were just, you know, at the mall that day, at what's actually going on. I mean, there was a tourist group from, I think, Spain or something, and their tour guide was actually explaining to them, like, this is not right. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was amazing to see the little kids just like, you know, ignore the police who told them not to do something. They, right, just, they, they just wanted some lemonade. They came up and bought lemonade from you. Oh, yeah, that, told you're not giving to. it away. That video free, was great, too, where, where the police are actually telling the kids, no, don't buy that from him. Don't don't give them any money. Just, wow. just take it yeah, free. And the little girl just shrugs and rolls her eyes. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Great video. <laughs> well, I, you know, Meg, keep us in the loop, will you please, and let us know what really? continues in this odyssey of yours. And I can tell you I'm burned out on D.C. just from listening <laughs> uh, to this. I mean, it's this crazy. is so crazy. And I know that uh, one of your uh, friends out there uh, Eddie Free has made the commitment to make the move to New Hampshire, so I think that's yeah, exciting. Yeah, and uh, I'll hopefully be coming up there soon after. All right, look forward to it, and I hope this uh, resolves. And good luck. Thanks, Meg. Take care, Meg. 855-450-3733. Man, that is so Nuts. crazy. That, Can you and, and, well, it's it's like you said. They're in this paper bag, and this this tour guide that's they're given by the court, the public defender, is like, yeah, well, you know, there's no really way out of here. You should just do this. Yeah, just jump yeah. in the hole. Yeah, just yeah. Look, it's so much work for me to fight this. Come on, just just take the deferral. Let's go to Captain Ned.